Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I will talk about the GT Omega Art Simulator cockpit. It was requested in the comments by Gertjan Driessen and it was also on my shortlist of cockpit to be tested. GT Omega is a Scottish company established in 2009 that specializes in office chairs and racing cockpits. The GT Omega Art cockpit is the smallest in their range and can be considered a mid-level chair. It consists of two main parts, the chair itself and the steering wheel and pedal section. So at first when I looked at the GT Omega I had mixed feelings because it looked like a decent chair but um, the frame was uh, with uh, cubicle tubes and uh, I had a bad experience with that at uh, with the RR3055. One of the things I normally don't test since most chairs are bought on the second hand market is the build process. I found out especially in the last review that assembling a chair can be quite tricky. Something I want to show you. This is the manual. Yeah, this is the manual. It's like one, one page, just recto, no verso. All the parts were carefully packed in protective wrapping. With its 44 kg, it's certainly not a lightweight seat either. So after all the parts were unpacked and the bolts and utilities were sorted, it was time to start. It was a fun experience and that's how it should be. Because last week uh, when I did the... Um, last week when I did the play seat trophy, it was hell. Honestly, to put it together, it was hell. I will not start grading seats on the construction process, but if I would grade it, it would certainly be a very high score. It takes a few hours to set it up, but with some suitable music on, it's a very relaxing moment. The configuration of the seat can be divided into two parts, those that can be adjusted on the fly and the ones bolted into place. Starting out with the pedals, the underside of the pedal holder is bolted to the frame. It is not completely bolted against the frame to allow the configuration of the upper part to be done on the fly. That part has five different options for inclination of the pedals. It is fixed in place with a hand screw at both sides. The plate holding the pedals can be used by the majority of mainstream pedals. It measures 40 cm width and 55 cm length. It allowed for my TLCM pedals to be attached with four bolts and they could be put off center to be aligned better with your legs. The two parts that make up the frame are connected with a cubic bar. It is attached on both sides to the parts with hand screws for easy configuration. If the small bar is not sufficient for your leg length, an extra large bar is provided that will give you another 10 centimeters of distance between the pedal base and the chair. The steering wheel holder can be raised and lowered by using the hand screws on both bars. The range is quite impressive from 50 cm from ground up until a whopping 70 cm. The plate holding the wheelbase can also be tilted up or down slightly. The chair is mounted on steel bars and because of the holes in the bars another seat can be mounted if necessary. The seat itself can be adjusted vertically with four different settings and can be inclined forwards and backwards by changing the level of the front and back series of bolts. If this proves not to be enough to find a good seating position, there is the on the fly part. The slider for the seat, very easy. You want it to get out, you just slide a bit back. You want to get back in, put yourself good and, and uh, it's, it's very comfortable to get in and out. That's one of the things. The inclination of the seat is very easy. Like it's unlike any other seat I already tested. So you have this handle like in a real car. As last, there is the gear shift holder that can be moved both in horizontal and on a fly in another vertical position. It's uh, pretty safe to say that this chair deserves an absolute 5 out of 5 for configuration with a list like this for modifications. And also worth mentioning, this chair is absolutely suitable for usage by different people without having to spend an hour reconfiguring it. The chassis is made out of stainless steel and as said, GT Omega chooses for their cheapest chairs to go with the cubic tubes. Unlike the race room design, they chose here for an attachment of both parts via two tubes instead of a central one. All the tubes seem to slide well into each other. 
The parts that are made for on-the-fly configuration feel very firmly attached once the bolts are in place. Even the wheelbase holder, which I feared would need a good amount of screw force to keep it into place. The parts that are really bolted into place felt, yeah, really fixed. Nothing more I can add to that. So, the rigidity... Uh, I... I am amazed. I actually am amazed. This is quite stable. It is clear that the design of the frame is efficient. It still flexes some, making it less suitable for higher end wheels, but with the modest force of my TGT, the frame performed admirably. I was able to attach the TLCMs with the necessary four bolts and during racing, they stayed well in their place. The wheelbase is attached with two bolts and some added large spacers to optimize the fixture. The paint GT Omega uses is matte non-powder coated paint that is fairly resistant to scratches, but due to the lack of pre-drilled holes in areas like where the rods are connecting the two parts, it is damaged nonetheless. And onto the seat. The used material is synthetic. It's not leather, but it has a good look and feel to it. The stitching seems very clean. The underside of the seat is very well finished too. No sloppy work. The tilting mechanism feels sturdy and when you tilt back, you're not worried for a moment that you might tip over the entire chair. Something that I also really appreciated are the black plastic covers for the mechanism. Everything is nicely covered up as not to mess up a very fine design. It sits really well and even though it's not a bucket seat, it feels snug due to the side bolsters. No back pains after driving for 2 hours of Gran Turismo Sport 7. Very clean. I do like the styling of the seat too. With the shiny grey plastic parts worked into it and the stitched logo, it looks high end. The entire frame is set on 8 plastic feet. I did mod them with a vinyl bottom so the plastic doesn't scratch over the floor and the rig is more movable. That's a, a really good tip. If you can't stabilize your, your Omega, then you just need to, to take out two of those from the front part and it will be just fine. For build quality, 4.5 out of 5. As far as options go, standard you have the seat rails, the tilting backrest, the gear shift holder, decent cable binders, all the tools to build it, bolts and spaces to attach the equipment, an insanely easy configurable setup, some stickers, a steering wheel holder that is wide enough to put your phone and a beverage, and attachment points for a display holder. 5 out of 5 for features. Options are also widely available. You can choose between three different types of chair you want with the Omega Art. There is a floor mat, keyboard tray, flight stick mount, handbrake mount, a very democratically priced monitor holder. Again, 4.5 out of 5 for features. Is there anything negative I can say about this chair? No, this is this is a very good seat for me. It's like the opposite of the PlaySeat Trophy. So that one is really aimed at um, eSports. This one is more aimed at Mr. Casual. And the price for all this beauty? 350 euro. That is PlaySeat money. 5 out of 5. With a total of 4.8 out of 5, I can say no other than that I recommend this seat for every casual gamer. This is the biggest bang for buck seat I have seen and reviewed so far. Well done, Scots. Thank you all for watching. I'm not sure what the next review will be, but I'm hoping for a Fanatec CSL Elite or GTDD Pro, depending on if I can find one at the right price. Don't forget to place a like if you got something from this and subscribe should you want to support this channel. See you all next video.